What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's video, we're going to be moving on to the final launch assault rifle in the game. This is the Castop 545, also known as the AK-105. And let's start this off with our damage profile, which this is one of those guns where we deal the same amount of damage anywhere in the body, and it's going to be a 4-5 to five shot kill, although there are multiple damage drop-offs within that. And then when it comes to headshots, up close we need two headshots mixed in with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill. And at medium range you need three headshots mixed in there to help, so generally speaking going for headshots with this gun isn't really going to help you a whole lot. Additionally, something really interesting about this gun, we do get slightly boosted damages if you swap this gun into semi-auto mode. However, it also significantly limits your rate of fire potential, even if you have an amazing trigger finger, it's really capping that super low. And also, it doesn't even reduce the number of shots to kill to the body. Basically, it just allows you to get a two-shot kill to the head in semi-auto mode. But that's simply not worth all the downsides. And as a result, this is more of just an interesting fact rather than something that you should ever consider doing in an actual game. After that though, let's have a look at our rate of fire, which is identical to the Castoff 74U at 652 rounds per minute. However, since this takes an extra shot to kill to the body compared to the 74U, our time to kill potential kinda sucks. It's actually the second worst in the assault rifle category, only beat by the M13B, but both of them are essentially the same when it comes to time to kill up close. And this is nowhere even remotely close to being a competitive time to kill in close quarter situations. Now, if you do go for those headshots and you mix two headshots in with a body shot, you get a three shot kill with a time to kill potential of 184 milliseconds, which is a very, very competitive time to kill. But the fact that you have to hit more headshots than body shots in order to make that happen, it's generally not going to be the most consistent option while playing in the game. Also, I should point out, just like with the M13B, at least our long range time to kill is actually quite good and you will start to excel in the longer ranges. It's just you don't typically see those longer range fights too often in the 6v6 maps in this game. But then let's have a look at our bullet velocity, which is just standard for assault rifles at 590 meters per second. And then let's get into our ranges. And the 545 does have a pretty great range potential. Our maximum damage range extends out to 32 meters, which is excellent. However, our total four shot kill potential extends out to about 40 and a half meters. So very, very impressive when it comes to that. And it's also very consistent since it doesn't matter if we hit limb shots with that. So that's really nice. And then beyond that, it is going to take you five shots to kill. As for hip fire, no surprises here. It's just standard for an assault rifle in this game. And then let's get into our idle sway. And there's definitely some sway with this gun. So that's something you probably want to get under control, especially with a gun like this, because this gun really excels in the recoil and accuracy department. So let's have a look at that. And as we can see here, it kicks up and a little to the right, but the bullet spacing is super tight there. This is one of the more accurate full auto guns in the entire game, and that's where this gun really stands out and excels compared to most of the other assault rifles, for instance, in the game. As for our handling, our aim down sight time is a little bit on the slower side for an assault rifle at 260 milliseconds. I mean, it's still within the realm of being a competitive aim down sight time, it's just a bit on the slower side. And then our sprint out time is just standard for assault rifles at 210 milliseconds. And finally for handling stats, let's have a look at our reload add time. This is 1.7 seconds, which is definitely slower than average for an assault rifle. And then finally for base stats, let's have a look at our movement stats on the Castoff 545. And it turns out in every category, this gun is essentially just average. It doesn't stand out in any way. There's nothing interesting to point out here. It's just average when it comes to movement. And with that, let's now move on to the barrel stats on this gun, since barrels tend to have a fairly large impact on the guns in this game. And we'll start this off with our barrel ranges. And as we can see here, there are only two barrels that change our range values, and they both improve our ranges. With the Castovia 406, this increases our ranges by about 12%, whereas the IGK-30 increases our ranges by about 7.5%. These aren't massive improvements by any means, but it does help a little bit. Next, let's have a look at the recoil with these barrels. And as you can see there, the CAS 7 406 millimeter, that one helps the most with our recoil. That's a nice improvement, although I would say also a fairly unnecessary improvement since the base recoil is so good. It's also worth noting with the IGK-30, the one in yellow there, this barrel is supposed to be helping with our recoil quite a bit. And you can tell it definitely helps with that stabilization. We're not really deviating from that recoil path too much. However, it also seemed to pretty noticeably increase the horizontal magnitude of the recoil, and that's harder to predict and control than vertical recoil, and as a result, I don't really like that barrel for recoil control on this gun. But finally, for the other two barrels I haven't touched on yet, while they do technically increase our recoil a little bit, this is still a very accurate gun, so at least when it comes to recoil on this gun, no matter which barrel you choose, you're still going to have a very accurate gun on your hands. 
But finally, for the barrel stats, I did want to cover how these impact our aim down sight speeds, keeping in mind these are hand tested values. And as you can see here, the first two barrels will add a little bit of aim down sight speed, but I still consider those to be fine aim down sight times for an assault rifle, especially an accurate assault rifle. However, that third barrel, the IGK-30, this one does add a lot of aim down sight time, and for that reason alone, I would generally stay away from this barrel. But then finally, the last barrel there gives us a bit of an improvement to our aim down sight speed. Nothing too major, but it does speed things up a little bit. And with that, we can finally move into some excellent attachment combinations that I put together for you guys with this gun. And the first one is my favorite way to run this. This is sort of my good all-around accuracy build with the Cast Off 545. And with this, I spent a lot of time mixing and matching, especially the underbarrel and the muzzle attachment to get the best possible recoil overall with these. So we've got the RF Crown 50 for our muzzle and the Commando Foregrip for our underbarrel. We're using the high velocity ammunition since we're often going to be using this at longer ranges since the recoil can handle that. And we're using the FSS OLEV laser for that added aiming stability as well as an improved aim down sight speed here. And then finally on this, we've got the Slimline Pro Optic just because that's my favorite and I do like using an optic with my longer range builds like this one. And with this, you can see the recoil is very tight as expected with an accuracy build for an accurate gun. So you should be able to challenge people across the map, no problem with this. And I managed to keep the aim down sight time at least reasonable with this. It is slower than the base at 290 milliseconds, but especially for a longer range gun, aim down sight speed doesn't come into play nearly as much as if you're running around and being aggressive. So 290 milliseconds is still very, very reasonable. And like I said, that's my preferred way of running this. Typically, I'll try to hang back, pick people off at range, making sure I'm pre-aiming whenever possible and not rushing around like a madman. However, I did want to provide another build for you guys that is designed a bit more for aggression. Just keep in mind, of course, the gun itself doesn't really excel in this area, so you're still often going to be losing out to SMGs and other assault rifles up close. But this at least adds a bit more versatility with this to allow for some more aggression. And with this, you can see some nice improvements to our aim down sight speed, our sprint out time, and our aim walking movement speed. And we also have a very good sprint speed for an assault rifle here at 6.22 meters per second. This is actually faster than a lot of the SMGs in the game. So this is great for just getting to those positions faster. So hopefully it allows you to take enemies off guard because you're kind of going to have to do that with the slow time to kill of this gun. Additionally, while the recoil is higher than the base recoil of this gun, this is still a very manageable recoil pattern. I may not be picking people off at like 100 meters anymore, but you're still going to be fine within the vast majority of ranges that you'll find in the regular multiplayer maps. And like I said, this is just a nice alternative for those that want a bit more aggression out of their build, while understanding that they're still going to be inherently at a disadvantage with this particular setup when it comes to raw killing potential. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the Cast Off 545. As for my thoughts on this gun, obviously it isn't super competitive and that's simply due to the fact that the time to kill is quite slow and there's not much you can do to help it there. I do think this gun could potentially use some buffs in the future, but at the same time, I do want to point out, I don't think it's like the complete unusable trash in public matches that a lot of people make it out to be. I think it is usable. It is nice having that accuracy and you can definitely make it work in your favor. However, if you are facing roughly equally skilled players using like more meta guns, you're probably not gonna perform super well with this. Now, of course, that is just my opinion and I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this gun really does suck or do you think it is a little bit underrated? And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes, like I said, I've now covered all of the assault rifles up until this point. Next, we are gonna move into the SMG category. We're gonna fly through that and then we'll probably move into battle rifles. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an out line of how this series is going to go because I do see a lot of requests from you guys but it's kind of already planned out. In either case if you guys enjoyed this video a like rating is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.